This video is about doing mathematical operations on raster data. And so far, we've been working with digital terrain model, or DTM data, which is the elevation of the ground picked up uh, by LiDAR. As I mentioned when I was introducing LiDAR, it also collects data on points above the ground, and in particular, uh, the highest point above the ground, that first point at which the laser intercepts something. And this can be used to create something called a digital surface model, or DSM. And so we can see that uh, over here in this top left corner, uh, which is the green line is the digital surface model, or basically a uh, line following the very tops of the tree canopy in this case. And in forested areas, we can then combine this digital surface model, which is that highest intercept, with the digital terrain model, which is the ground, to create a canopy height model, which basically tells us how tall the trees are at different points across space. And we can do that by subtracting the ground elevation from the elevation of the digital surface model. And so that just then leaves the height above ground, which is the canopy height, the height of the trees. And to do this uh, in R, we can actually just subtract those two rasters from one another. So let's first go ahead and load up uh, the digital terrain model and digital surface models uh, so that we can work with them. Again, we're using the stars package, so we'll say library stars. And then we want to use that read stars function from last time. And so we'll go ahead and load the digital terrain model again, DTM underscore harv. And we'll assign it the output of read underscore stars. And that data again was in this data subdirectory. So we'll say data slash harv, because it's in the harv subdirectory, slash harv underscore dtm crop dot tiff. And then we can also load the digital surface model in the same way. So that'll be ds for surface m underscore harv. Assign it the output of read stars. And then data slash harv slash harv underscore dsm crop dot tiff. And so now we have the digital surface model and the digital terrain model. And we want to get the canopy height model by doing this subtraction. And so let's store this in chm for canopy height model underscore harv. And now we can just subtract two rasters from one another. And so we want to take dsm underscore harv minus dtm underscore harv. And if we run this, we'll see uh, that we have a new variable called chm harv. And that new raster has been created by going to each cell one at a time or element wise and taking the value for the digital surface model and subtracting the value for the digital terrain model and then storing the resulting value in the same position in the new raster. And so we can then graph this new raster like we've graphed uh, rasters before. And so we can say ggplot with no data in it because we're doing geospatial work. 
geom underscore stars, because this is a stars geospatial object. And then data is equal to chm underscore harv to graph this canopy height model. So we can click run. And wait a second, because it's graphing a large number of pixels at once. And then we can see uh, the resulting canopy height model with values ranging from zero up to about 40 meters. So those are some pretty tall trees. And we can see uh, a bunch of areas with no trees in them. Those look like uh, clear cuts of some kind, uh, probably, uh, and maybe some sort of low-lying uh, valley or body of water. Uh, and then areas uh, with trees uh, throughout the rest of the region. So that's the basic idea behind how we do math with rasters. We can simply perform mathematical operations with one or more rasters, and those will result in a new raster that is the result of the element-wise calculations uh, done for each cell one at a time. Check, check, chickity, check, check. How are we doing now, huh? An ongoing disaster zone of a disaster zone. Checking the video pixelation now. How about now? It'd be nice if this would work, because so far this recording session is somehow capturing the gestalt of 2020.